Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jack. Back again to bring you my primer, my quick start guide to Augmentation Evoker. If you are not familiar with how the spec works at all, I have a video, a separate video covering all the basics and it sort of like walks you through everything. We're going to move a little faster in this video to go over talents, gameplay, how you can use your utility to the best of your abilities. So make sure you check out that first video if you haven't already. Now, Augmentation Evoker, of course, your damage is based off of buffing your allies. You are a DPS sort of support. You take a DPS slot, and really not at any time is it going to be you replacing a healer. That being said, you're going to have three and debatably four different buffs you can be applying to your allies. Your mastery buff is going to be Sands of Time, where based off your mastery percentage, you are applying versatility to your allies and just to one ally whenever you cast your empowered ability. You're also going to be having Ebon Might, which is giving primary stat to yourself and four allies, that your goal is to make sure you're maintaining for about as long as possible for a burst window. Speaking of burst windows, Breath of Eons is probably your biggest resource for maximizing your burst damage by... Also, applying or extending the duration of Ebon Might, but giving you another 12-second burst window through the temporal wounds that it applies to its targets, where you and your allies' damage over that 12-second period is then going to accumulate and then critically strike at the end of that 12-second period, resulting in even larger amounts of burst damage. So, your use of Breath of Eons is going to be dependent on the burst profile of the DPS players around you, to order to maximize it to the fullest. But we're gonna keep it pretty simple here to get ourselves started. And finally, your last buff is gonna be Prescience, which is a 22 second duration on an 11 second cooldown, which means that you're gonna be able to apply this before a boss pull starts to an ally, have it rolling on them, and apply it to another one as the pull begins. So usually if you have about a 10 or 12 second pull timer, that'll be perfect. So you can instantly apl apply Prescience to who you want, and then apply it once more as the pull is going to begin. Uh, this build is mostly one size fits all, and I have another image here which shows in green some of like the core build that you're going to be going after. Everything in green is pretty much a core talent you can run for raids or mythic plus, while those highlighted in yellow are going to be some of the optional utility that you can jump between as needed, as desired, depending on what sort of content that you're going to be in. Once again, you're not replacing any healers, so you can pretty easily run some of the things in the class tree like Source of Magic to buff your healer, but mostly, I would focus on the spec tree as, like I said before, it's pretty one-size-fits-all. Like I mentioned before, when it comes down to gameplay, Augmentation Evoker is all about buffing your allies and making sure they have the most stacked resources possible for their burst windows. The spec is going to prefer to buff allies that have two minute burst windows because this is going to align with Breath of Eons. To that end, in a dungeon environment, it becomes pretty easy to operate and not that complex at all. If you see that Ebon Might is about to come off cooldown, but the pull is almost over, save it, make sure you're building up your resources, hold on to empower spells, all of that until the pull ends, assuming there isn't some immediate threat you need to have everybody's damage buffed up, save it for the next pull, and then burst it down even harder. The way you're going to do this is by, once again, making sure you're using your prescience on CD. In a dungeon environment, especially, even if you're not in combat, just keep using it because you'll have it on that target long enough for them to be able to chain it into the next pull. Ebon Might would be one thing that you would save. Breath of Eons would be another that you would save for those primary burst damage pulls or primary areas where people are popping cooldowns, but you're not a spec that in a dungeon environment needs to really freak out over watching everybody's cooldowns. The biggest thing is making sure you're aligning Breath of Eons with your allies' incoming damage. So a general rotation is gonna look something along the lines of using prescience before a pull, making sure you're applying Ebb and Might to your allies, extending the duration of that by using your Empower spells. I also like to make sure I'm consuming my Essence and getting at least one on cooldown or on cycle very quickly, then using Breath of Eons to make sure that we're having this full 12 second burst window, and then making sure both my Empower spells are on cooldown for maximum buffs on my allies, so that we're going to be able to pound as much damage into that 12 second window as we possibly can. Keeping Prescience on cooldown, which has a chance to give Essence Burst, which is free Eruption casts, which extend the duration of Ebon Might, and reduce the cooldown of Upheaval, which gives more versatility buffs. So by executing a damage rotation, and a pretty basic one at that, you're extending the damage buff onto allies, 
dealing damage yourself, and sort of regening resources that you can use to buff your allies further. This gets a bit more complex in raids, I would argue actually extremely complex if you wanted to perfectly maximize everything. And when we know more information, once we get a lot of data, when augmentation comes out officially, it might be slightly easier. But I will say, when you get started with augmentation in a raid environment, it's all going to be about lining up damage cooldowns to a massive, massive effect. The best way to really be doing this is prescience pre-pull. Start off with players that are the burstiest possible standing around you sort of as the pull gets started. You could even like potentially pre-cast Ebon Might a second before the pull starts. If you wanted to like buff some unholy DKs, if you wanted to buff some like Warlocks or something to be able to get the buff onto them early, then use your Empower spells followed by your Breath of Eons so that that next 12 seconds players are buffed by Prescience, Ebon Might, Empower spells for versatility, and then you're having the Temporal Threads damage from or temporal wounds from breath of eons to burst damage as hard as you possibly can and maximize that effect when you are playing with augmentation you're often going to have around 85 percent uptime onto ebon might and there's moments where you can burn extra resources to get like one extra second of uptime or start regening resources to wait for the next round of burst effects i'd really recommend especially with how bursty the damage is going on for pretty much all of your allies to extend Ebon Might as best as you possibly can and then keep in mind the two minute damage windows so that when you are on a fight like Rashok, which is just very straightforward every time that players are naturally just going to use their cooldowns on cooldown because there's not really any uptime loss on an encounter like that. When you see the two minute timer kind of coming back, that's where you might want to pool your essence and lose a little bit of Ebon Might uptime. And then as two minutes come back, you'll be able to set up another ramp and sort of like burst window to be able to execute on. So once again, it would be casting your Ebon Might, keeping Prescience on cooldown, keeping your Empower spells and Upheaval and Fire Breath on cooldown, and then extending the duration with Eruption Spam to be able to get your Upheaval back. When you don't have any of those resources to spend, I pretty much was just casting Living Flame to farm for Essence Bursts, for more Eruptions, for more extended duration. A lot of times during downtime, I would pretty much just slam living flames while I regen essence so that the next burst window that comes up, I would be able to have large amounts of extensions, large amounts of free eruptions that also cast faster from some of your talents and burst much harder for some of the Breath of Eons windows that you would have access to. Very important to note with Breath of Eons is that it's based off class damage, not rings, trinkets, or embellishes. So you're not going to be able to have a stack group with like Beacon of the Beyonds and everybody hit it at the same time and have its damage maximized. That's unfortunate. The spec is going to do insane AoE damage at the current tuning, and this can of course change. It doesn't seem to be super insane at single target, and the more that you're coordinating those two-minute burst windows, the better it'll be. But this spec is going to be very complex and frustrating to maximize when it comes to a rating environment, so keep that in mind. From my conversations with some of the other testers for augmentation, shout out to Preheat and Sailder from the Wormrest Temple, I think is the class discord. Thanks to them, they were talking about how some of the burstiest specs are going to be the most beneficial. Specifically, of course, we were talking a lot about how Unholy DK was immensely, immensely good. But there's also some odd sort of like complications with certain specs who are not benefiting quite as much as some of the other ones. But specs like Mage, Warlock, Devastation Evoker, Shadow Priest that can burst really heavy damage in that two minute window is all going to help quite a bit. The more specs that have Two minute burst windows can like, get PI or benefit from PI to help your Breath of Eons and your burst damage the most are really just gonna be strong targets to go after when it comes to playing Augmentation Evoker. Some specs that are not benefiting as much would be things like Rogues. I believe Rogue still is at a point where they're not benefiting as heavily. Both Subtlety, Outlaw, and Arms Warrior were both some of the ones that were struggling. Frosty K and I believe also BM Hunter were on the list. But like I said, things are, of course, able to change. It's not going to be like the end of the world if those specs get buffed, but if you're really, really trying to min-max on week one, it looks like the first set of classes and specs that I listed would probably be quite a bit better. But of course, I will have some more updates when we know which specs are going to be absolutely the best and some more that'll be uh, more purposeful for you to actually run with 
in a dungeon environment. Since we're in an environment already where casters are really, really meta, the more that you're able to just talk to and communicate with them for when you want to burst cooldowns in dungeons, the better the spec is going to do. But yeah, be sure to check out the uh, talent string in the description down below. The spec is going to be absolutely insane, I think, for dungeons in particular. I'm a little worried about how it's going to pan out in raids, but we'll see. And like I said, if you wanted the full basic beginner explanation, I also have another video linked in the description that goes over that as well. If you're enjoying the augmentation content, be sure to subscribe and check out our Patreon as well if you want to support the content further. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you all enjoyed it, and I'll catch you all next time.